All right, we're back for what may be our last case of the day and I guess last case of the week. It's a sentencing in the matter of People versus Carl David Lockhart. That's you, sir? Yes, sir. I met you at the time of your plea. You're charged with possession of methamphetamine alleging to have occurred on September 30th. The matter was accelerated. You had made a prosecutor made a plea offer of use of methamphetamine, and Mr. Gibson and Mr. Marvin, I think, came to me and said, "Well, he accepts the plea. Can we just do it now?" So we did. Um, that was on October fourth. I canceled the defendant's bond, set the matter for sentencing today. I wanted to get some more information because um, I was concerned because the affidavit says he has 9.2 grams of methamphetamine, which is apparently supported. He denied that. I don't think it was packaging. I think it was meth, unless you can disabuse me of that, Mr. Gibson. No one's here from the prosecutor's office for the sentence. Stoney Summy from the uh, county uh, veterans assistance uh, was here. <clears throat> He's not here today. Um, the defendant, well, I did talk to his previous probation officer, Matt Huff, and uh, Mr. Huff's fear is you traded alcohol addiction for methamphetamine addiction. Uh, <clears throat> you're depressed, your family went to Tennessee, and you're here, and life's not going well and you turn to methamphetamine. You are a veteran, you're eligible for veteran services. According to Mr. Summey, they were ready to put you in treatment. Uh, <clears throat> and they have a house for you uh, in one of the veterans housing. There's nothing else really remarkable about this other than you got stopped for no insurance and I think no plate. You're driving around with no plate. I see a syringe, which means you're using methamphetamine intravenously, which is not good. And you have quite a bit of it. <clears throat> I had nowhere near nine grams of methamphetamines. It was in a wooden box that he weighed the scale on. So that's where the extra weight came from. That's what you said. Can you confirm that, Mr. Gibson? Well, it says... I don't see a lab report, but it does. It says that he weighed. It says in the report, um, wooden box containing 9.3 grams of methamphetamine. The chunk was weighed outside of the box at Three Rivers Police Department. It also field tested positive, sent to MSP for lab testing. So I guess I don't know. I mean, it does. Yeah, it does sound like it's saying nine, that it's 9.3 9 grams, grams of meth. But impossible. Well, we'll see. One of the problems is that, and it's not necessarily a problem, but this was done so quickly that it didn't, we didn't have time to get the lab report back. But the officer is explicit that it was the drugs. You got somebody in the car. She has open warrants for her. She gets arrested and taken to Papa on her charges, and you're taken to our jail. Um, you owe money in a domestic violence case, 222360, and a drinking driving case, 231374. I think you did 93 days on the drunk driving case. Yes, Your Honor. Um, you haven't made any payments since January or February. You did call in May and say that you didn't have the ability to pay and you would try to. Your money was being spent on methamphetamine. No, uh, this stuff. So here we are. You've been in jail for nine days, which is a good start. Uh, Mr. Gibson, what would you like me to know? Well, the defendant, um, prior to being arrested, apparently Mr. Lockhart had started uh, through the Veterans Affairs of St. Joseph County. Uh, Stoney indicated that he had been in his housing program for about three weeks and that he wanted to get him into treatment as soon as possible. So apparently before he got arrested, I guess there was a there was some type of a recognition by the defendant that he knew he needed, he was struggling 
And the way he described it to me, you know, he describes alcohol and methamphetamine, but the defendant indicates to me that alcohol is actually his, I guess you could say, the controlled substance that he's got the, the biggest problem with. I don't know if it's a circumstance where, you know, they, they, go, they go together, but I, I think the defendant, he definitely recognizes he has a problem. He's seeking inpatient treatment or outpatient treatment but he does know that he needs treatment. Um, and so if it's not inpatient treatment, he needs intensive outpatient treatment. He's also indicated to me that he's hoping to start a new job soon that he believes he's lined up. Um, he's also talked about an apprenticeship as an electrician. So I think the defendant, he, he, uh, I think he recognizes he has a problem. He's he's wanting help. So I would ask the court to, uh, if, if the court believes that the time that the defendants had in the jail is not enough of a consequence, I would ask the court to consider putting the defendant on probation with the idea of uh, the defendant's drug treatment uh, being the main goal of that um, as an alternative. The defendant also could be ordered to do community service. And so I'm asking the court to sentence the defendant as far as jail time for credit for time served. Thank you. One thing I can do is wipe out some of these fines with the time you've been in jail. Mr. Lockhart, what would you like me to know? Uh, what my Attorney said, Your Honor, is pretty accurate. I I do realize that I had an issue with the methamphetamines. It was a fairly recent issue, actually. It's not something that's been going on for a while, but the alcohol is a huge impact in my life. And I believe everybody says marijuana is a gateway drug, but alcohol is that for me. I ended up getting intoxicated and saying yes to some things that I shouldn't have said yes to. But methamphetamines is not something I ever wanted I despise it, honestly, in a way. I don't want my son to have a junkie as a father. And being, I guess, arrested in the situation that I was arrested in with a syringe and the person that I was with and seeing the lifestyle that I was turning into and going down, it, it terrifies me in a way. But I know that's not a guarantee. I know I'm never going to do anything again, and it's hard for you to believe that. But it's just the truth. It's my truth. I don't have anything else to give you the give you a certainty that I won't do anything like that again but my word and I swear to God I'll never touch this shit again well it's very powerfully addictive and you were injecting it with us that's scary that's down the path um, at one point you said you were working at nickels flooring yes sir and at one point you said you were a bartender at the American League currently bartending and I worked uh, for Greg Nichols and Josh Nichols for about eight years. All right. And are you, is that job waiting for you when you get out? Uh, the jobs that's waiting for me when I get out, uh, the housing that Stoney put me in at the VA housing here at M86, the gentleman that lives next to me, he's also in the VA and he is a manager at Napa and he's given me a job, but uh, also through the American Legion, I met a guy named Josh Williams there and he uh, gave me pretty much an inside track to getting a apprenticeship as an electrician at Kendall Electric. And I've applied for both. I've just been waiting for the phone calls. I, for all I know, I get out and I could have the jobs. The Napa is guaranteed, but the Kendall Electric is kind of hopeful. All right. And being a bartender is not an ideal for job for someone that's got a serious alcohol addiction. No, Your Honor, it's not. All right, I'm going to wipe out the fail to pay fines and costs and interfering with the crime report. And 22276M, nine days credit, nine days. I'm going to wipe out the fail to pay fines and costs in the drinking driving case. Nine days credit, nine days. Leaving zero and zero fine. So those two things I 
you're driving around on the wrong place with the wrong person at the wrong time with a syringe and nine grams of methamphetamine, whether you agree with it or not, that's how much it weighed. So either you don't remember, don't recall, or you're not telling me the truth. Yeah. But I'm going to order 30 days credit nine. You're going to get five days of good time. You need some more clean time. I can't tell how many people have told me I'm never going to use meth again. And then five minutes later, they were using it again. Right, I swear um, to nine, uh, nine uh, I could give you 90 days if you'd like. I just don't understand why I'm being punished for something I didn't do. Because, well, let's assume it was one gram. It was 0.9 grams. In a, a wooden container. 9.2 grams. Well, I guess, it, can I... Explain to the defendant that under the law, the, the the law says from like in a sense any weight up to twenty five grams, it's all treated the same. I did not know that. I'm sorry. So I mean, it's it's in a sense. But it was literally 0.9. Residue is is a ten year felony, just as much as having twenty four grams. So yes. I mean, I'm just telling you. All right. The okay. Law, well, the, the problem is it isn't 0.9 grams. It's nine point two grams. Um, even so. Um, yes, your honor. It's meth with a syringe. So let's assume it is 0.92 grams. Yes, your honor. Um, 0.092 grams, a, a less than a gram. Maybe you're right. It's still methamphetamine that you're doing with a syringe. Um, your honor, the syringe wasn't mine, if I'm being honest. All right. But the meth was. Okay. And you're going to get some more clean time. Yes, Your Honor. The fine is zero. There's a $75 crime victim's rights fee and a $50 state minimum fee. You weren't paying your fines and costs because you were spending it on methamphetamine. So I'm not going to jack you up with a bunch of costs. Um, apparently, you were working, but you weren't I giving any of the money to us. Your Honor. What's that? I only, only had that job for about two or three weeks now, Your Honor. All the right. rest of that time, I was unemployed. $125 or two days. Things are going to get better. Yes, uh, Matt just says you're in a low point. You're depressed. You got reason to be depressed, but methamphetamine is not the answer to this question. It's it's a 10 year statements to you weren't true either, Your Honor. My family's here in Michigan. They're not in Tennessee. I get my daughter every other weekend. I, I don't understand where what he was saying is coming from. All right. Well, maybe they came back. They've never left, Your Honor. Oh, he told me that they had gone to Tennessee and you were here by yourself. Who's the girl that was in the car with you? Uh, her name is uh, D, I believe, Diana. Diana. And yeah, how'd you end I up was with giving her? her a ride from a house on, uh, what is it called? Uh, it's a street over by where I used to live. We knew some mutual friends there and I was giving her a ride from there. Well, you used to live at Rock River. So yep. where where is your family? Uh, my wife, ex-wife, lives in uh, Jones now, Jones, Michigan, with her new fiance and my daughter. And my new son and his mother live in Vicksburg. Okay, you got a lot going on, don't you? Um, and you're right. You need to be a better person for all those people you just named. You're gonna get some clean time, about two more weeks. Uh, the resources from the VA will be waiting for you when you get out. All right, I wiped out everything else that I could, $125 or two additional days. So you got to pay $125 at least, state minimum fine, or two additional days. Yeah, it was a right. I was doing nothing but harm for me. It's like it's taking me away from my appointment. I mean, not All right, how about 180 days? How about a year? It's a 10-year felony reduced to a misdemeanor. Um, they accelerated it. Um, you need some time to get this out of your system. So it is doing you some good. You can go with a court officer.